Iceland. This island, located in the North Atlantic, between Norway and Greenland, piques the curiosity of tourists and scientists alike. Its breathtaking landscapes and impressive nature are the result of constant volcanic activity and a harsh oceanic climate. Periods of calm, clear skies are rare. In one instant, the weather can bring rain, sleet or snow, often accompanied by biting winds directly from the polar circle. This frozen environment contrasts with the hot, magmatic heart boiling under Iceland. The heart that so fascinates scientists from around the globe. This intense volcanic energy, when harnessed through geothermal power plants, can be a precious resource. It can provide heat for homes and support greenhouse produce across the whole country. With its incessant volcanic activity, Iceland is a point of focus for many volcanologists. They search to better understand the geological mechanisms driving our planet. In March 2021, with support from the Swiss National Foundation, a team of volcanologists from the University of Geneva hurried to the southwest of Iceland to investigate unprecedented seismic activity that had started on February the 24th. It hinted at movements of magma below the surface and an imminent eruption. Based in Grindavik on the Reykjanes Peninsula, the scientists, in collaboration with Icelandic researchers, studied the surface deformation related to the seismic activity. We are here in the Reykjanes Peninsula in the southeast of Iceland. We came here very quickly, <laughs> only deciding that a few days ago because there is a, a seismic and volcanic crisis going on. The earthquakes are directly linked to the movement of magma in the crust. They can be very powerful and cause serious damage. The local residents and volcanologists were shaken by a dozen earthquakes a day. We don't sleep, we haven't slept very well for two weeks. I think I'm a bit scared now. Science de la Terre à Genève. Whoa! The regular earthquakes and volcanic activity are due to Iceland's very unique geological context. Iceland sits just on the divergent boundary between the major North American and Eurasian tectonic plate. It also lies above a geological anomaly called the Iceland Plume, a hotspot that originates deep in the Earth mantle. L'endroit où on se trouve actuellement, les, euh, les deux plaques tectoniques qui, qui, portent, qui portent ces continents et, et une partie de l'océan Atlantique euh, s'éloignent euh, ici à à peu près 2 cm par an. En règle générale, l'écartement des plaques tectoniques se produit en plein milieu des océans, qu'on appelle communément un rift ou une dorsale, une dorsale médio-océanique. Ici en Islande, il se trouve qu'on a la chance d'avoir un mélange entre Ce, ce côté écartement des deux plaques et qui se surimpose là-dessus, il y a ce qu'on appelle un point chaud, c'est-à-dire une remontée très lente de manteaux, de roches du manteau qui viennent d'environ de, 3000 km de profondeur dans la, dans la Terre, qui remontent très lentement et qui participent à soulever l'Islande et qui font donc que ce rift, cet endroit où nos deux plaques s'écartent l'une de l'autre, se retrouve à cet endroit-là, émergé. After around 30 hours without any earthquakes, the magma broke through the crust of the Reykjanes Peninsula. The new Fagradasflatl volcano was born. The eruption marks the first in the region for the last 800 years. It was an amazing opportunity for the University of Geneva volcanologists to advance their research with an ideal case study. They collaborated closely with their Icelandic colleague, notably Astarud Jartadortir from the University of Iceland and were invited by the Icelandic Department of Civil Protection and Emergency Management to share their findings and partake in the discourses, forecasting the risks for the population. We work on the processes of deformation in the volcanic zone with different tools, so principally the terrain, the terrain, but also the imagery of drones and the imagery of satellite. With these three scales, satellite, drone and what we see on the terrain, on arrive à avoir une sorte de vision complémentaire de, des différents types de formations à différentes, à différentes échelles. 
The researchers used a fixed-wing drone, which is geo-referenced to a GPS terminal and programmed via a touchscreen tablet. With it, they recorded high-resolution photographs of areas of key geological interest. These images were then compiled into a 3D model and allowed the scientists to detect the land surface changes that indicated movement of magma below the surface. On se trouve vraiment dans une zone, une zone qui est extrêmement oblique. C'est pas une, deux plaques qui se séparent de manière orthogonale, mais vraiment dans un système très très oblique. Et ça, en fait, le, le, le magma ensuite remonte le long, le long de ces structures obliques pour ensuite, dans quelques occasions, comme dans le cas de Kailir, là, on voit ce, ce, ce petit volcan assez, euh, assez typique, ce joli petit cône. Le magma se met en place et souvent euh, atteint la surface et crée des éruptions. Le magma il est en train de remonter le long de cette limite de plaques, il est en train de créer une nouvelle croûte euh, océanique et se propage. Donc quand le magma commence à, à faire sa place à la limite de plaques, on va créer des, des failles, des structures qu'on peut nous observer sur le terrain. Donc c'est vraiment pour ça qu'on est là, mieux comprendre comment ces, ces réseaux de fractures se connectent avec le magma et pour essayer de mieux comprendre aussi comment le magma va se propager dans la croûte en analysant ces systèmes de, de, de structures. The build-up of earthquake activity that culminated in the eruption of Agrapalsvjak is one of the longest recorded in Icelandic history. For more than six months, hundreds of earthquakes were registered, putting the residents through significant strain. It's interesting to know what are the implications for the people and the inhabitants who live around this peninsula of Reykjanes. And for that, we found out that the population who are qui vivent à environ 10-15 km d'ici, en fait moins, de 35 et 10 plutôt, chaque nuit, en fait, ou chaque jour, sentent vraiment la, la, la terre gronder. Donc on a cette forte activité sismique qui, 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 euh, qui a une, un impact assez fort sur les populations aussi. Hein. At first, it was a piece of cake. We were used to it, we thought, but now it's getting very... <laughs> First, I was very scared because I have go through this before. You know, when you're getting terrified once and you do it again and you were in the same situation again, so it automatically comes back. Qui est intéressant en Islande, c'est qu'il y a une connexion assez forte entre les informations que les scientifiques transmettent au travers des médias pour la, la population. We know what's going on because we are really, really well informed and the technology today is really, really informing. We know where the lava is, we know what's going on, so we know if something happens, we are most likely to stay at home and just chill. It's always important to know a little bit more about volcanoes and tectonic movements to concern a bit what uh, can be the, the consequences of some processes and then translate that into uh, risk evaluation for the population that lives uh, close to these areas. Over the spring of 2021, the doctor Joël Ruch and his team spent almost two months on the Reykjanes Peninsula, collecting precious data on the processes that led to the eruption of the Fagradalsvjak volcano. Once processed and interpreted, this data will provide insight for volcanologists to better understand the processes building up to an eruption, and it will help to better forecast and manage the threat from volcanic activity across the globe.